Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a really cool outline effect in Unity using the inbuilt shader graph. Let's get into this. So I'm going to create a new 2018.2 project using the 3D template and just going to give it a name like shader workspace. Now you can either just create a default 3D template or use the lightweight render pipeline template, but this is how to do it from scratch or if you want to do it with an existing project. So in the package manager, under Windows package manager, we're going to select the all tab, expand the built-in packages drop down, and we're going to look for the render pipelines like where. We're going to hit install, then once that's done, we're going to come straight back into that menu, scrolling down, looking for shader graph. Once shader graph is installed, we can set up our project by coming into the project view, right click, create, go to the little rendering drop down, and we're going to hit lightweight pipeline asset. What this allows us to do is create an object that we can edit some of the settings for, uh, but for now we're just going to keep it with a default name. Under the Edit Project Settings Graphics tab, we're just going to drag in our render pipeline asset to where it says Scriptable Render Pipeline Settings. Now we can move on to the project. So I've just gone ahead and set up my scene with a high poly and a low poly version of the same model, just to showcase the actual effect and then just a brick texture so we can be used to test out textures. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click create shader, we're going to come to the PBR graph, we're just going to call this outline. Now we can't directly apply shaders to objects, we need to give them a material, so to do that we're just going to right click on the actual shader and then create a material from that. Now because we right clicked on the shader it inherits, you see the shader outline. So we're just going to call this outline and we're going to drag this onto both objects. So if we double click the outline shader, you can see it opens up in shader graph. So you can see once it's opened up in shader graph, we have our PBR master node. What this is, is basically everything on a material that we can change in the inspector, we can now assign using values. Uh, so to get the effect we're looking for, we're going to use a Fresnel effect node. Uh, you can access the node menu by right clicking create node or just hit space. Uh, so you see the Fresnel effect, it basically gives us a radial gradient. And if we were to plug that into the emission, you can see we've got a very basic and static outline effect. If we just right click, come to custom mesh, just use a low poly model. You can see this is essentially all you would need but it's very hard to control uh, and it's not that animatable. So what we're going to do is with the Fresnel effect, we're actually going to take the output and we're going to stick it into a multiply node uh, into both directions. And you can see this takes the actual gradient and it makes it a lot less dramatic. So if we put it in now, we change the power value. You can see it really gives us a bit more finer control. Uh, so now you might want a bit of colour for this, so if we do, we're just going to take this and pass this into another multiply node, but this time in the B socket. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to bring in a colour node. So you can see here, if we change the colour, we get a multiplication of the actual Fresnel effect, and then it's just laying the colour on top of it. Uh, we're going to set the mode to HDR so we can use emission. I'm going to right click convert to property. So now we can rename this to Fresnel Color. Make sure it keeps HDR. And now we can change this in the inspector. So if we save asset and we close our shader graph down. You can see in the material, if I come into my scene view, you can change the Fresnel color in the actual object. So back in the shader graph, what we're going to do is we're going to get a texture working because it's all good and well having the outline effect, but if you don't have a texture to go with it, it's not going to look that good. Uh, so we're just going to plug this into the emission. Uh, so you can see now it has got an outline, uh, but for the texture we're going to drag the albedo into a multiply node as we're going to want to combine two values. Uh, the two values we're going to want to combine 
is a, another color node. Uh, this is the actual color of the, not the outline, but the base color underneath it. And we're gonna just convert to property, make sure it's in HDR. This we're gonna rename to albedo color. Um, now we're gonna come up here, click add texture 2D. We're gonna call this albedo texture. So once you create values up here, if you need a reference to them, you can just drag them out. What we're going to do is we're going to take this albedo texture node. Now you notice here in the brackets it says T2. That is the data type that it needs. This needs A4. So as a result, you can't plug them in. What you need to do is take this into a sample texture node. And this will just take the texture and convert it into the RGBA4 value we need. So that's the texture now working. Now all we need to do is animate the actual texture. So as you can see, when we change the Fresnel effect power is what actually changes our outline effect. So we're just gonna set this to one for now. And we're going to use a time node to actually change it. So if we were to just, for example, directly plug the sine time in, because the sine wave goes from negative one to one, you can see it animating here. Uh, but we don't like that. So we're actually going to take the sign time node and clamp it to keep it in between a certain value range. So that's just going to be 0.5 and 1. So now we have it, so instead of going between negative 1 and 1, it goes between 0.5 and 1. Uh, we're going to come here, here and create a new vector 1 and call it Fresnel Multiplier. And all we're going to do with this is take this and combine it with a multiply node. Okay, let me just sort these connections out. Uh, that goes into B, that goes into A. It doesn't really matter, it just looks better. Uh, and then this output is what we plug into the Fresnel effect. So now, because our Fresnel multiplier is on zero, if we were to change it to something like two, uh, what we can do here is set it to a slider, just set it between 0 and like 10 or some arbitrary value. Uh, I think we should have our shader done. Uh, all we're going to do is just going to add a bit more. This bit is optional, uh, but all you can do is just create uh, vector ones, set them to sliders. Assign them to all these if you want the values. So for now, I think we're sorted for our outline effect. So we're just going to hit save asset, close it down. And now you can see if we select the material, we have the albedo color. So we can change the color of the base material. We could change the albedo color. We can even give it a mission. Like so. We can just set the multiplier of the Fresnel effect. So we're just going to set this to 1. And um, we can select a texture. So I know it's not that hard to see because we've got it colored, but if we would say 2 white, we're just going to get rid of the Fresnel color. You can see we ba we do have the basic texture. Now, if we're just going to showcase the actual outline, we're just going to use like a, a bright white. Hit play, you will see it start to modulate. Like so, and that is due to our sign time node because it's a value constantly going from negative 1 to 1 uh, but then making sure it only goes between 0.5 and 1 so the graph would look something like this so it'd be a lot higher and uh, then we're just creating a multiplier just to make it look better passing that into the power node of the Fresnel effect then we're just going to take both those values and multiply it just to make it a lot less dramatic again multiply it with a color node just to give it some color and that goes into the emission. Uh, for the texture we're just taking an input texture sampling it into the RGBA format which can then be used with a color multiplier to give it some color and place it into the RGBA socket. So that was how to create a very simple and basic outline shader using shader graph. If you enjoy my content please make sure to like, comment and subscribe so that we'll my channel out. There will be new videos every Wednesday at 7pm GNT. Until next time it's peace out.